everybody. I am Sevi. Um, it's nice to see you guys, see your wonderful, happy faces this fantastic Friday evening. Um, I do have my wine because it is whiskey and wine, and this is a root eye. Wait, I think, can you guys hear a rude eye or is he muted? <laughs> hold on, hold on. On my end. Oh my god, okay, hold on a second. Don't talk, let me fix this, hold on. Wow. Okay. Don't call me a boomer, I didn't do it. Right now, now it should be fine. <laughs> Hello, chat, man, that was, I nailed that intro too, I'm so mad. <laughs> Uh, hello, hello. Let me first, can you guys hear me before I do the whole damn thing again? Testing, 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 testing. I see the bar going up. I think what happened was... <laughs> what gonna happened, to, Sabs? I'm gonna have to fix this in the, uh, in the other overlays, too. Well, I muted you in the browser because you were coming on, and then what happened was I didn't click control your audio via OBS, um, so... <laughs> <sighs> Welcome to the most well-oiled machine on the internet, whiskey and wine chat. Um, if you're confused, if you're over on tabletop right now and you you don't know what's going on, uh, I know you guys in Moonskull do, but if you don't, this is whiskey and wine. On Moonskull, we do this every Friday. Savs and I uh, do this show. I'm whiskey, she's wine, and we just sit down and we chat and we spend time with you guys just as friends, uh, you know, hanging out playing games, telling scary stories, and, of course, having whiskey and wine. Um, so we're double broadcasting today, though, because one of the subjects we're going to be talking about is Legend Seeker, and that touches both worlds. So don't be alarmed by the Moonskull iconography. That is not a mistake. We are just double broadcasting. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, I drink whiskey, she drinks wine. If you guys would like us to take additional shots and toast to you, you can send a $50 super chat. I'll take a shot of whiskey. She'll take a sip of wine because she's a lady, not a lush. And uh, we'll have a good time toasting to your name and a subject of your choice if you happen to leave one. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, if you, if you guys remember what happened last week, is if you give a rude eye too much alcohol, we're going to have to put up with a drunk mort in mommy's mask so i don't I know if that that's bad. what <laughs> i was not that bad i think chat will agree with me i was not that bad uh but yes it might make more a little more interesting this this is true um so what are we gonna be talking about today sevs what are we gonna be doing well um <clears throat> we have an amazing and fun um schedule we're, we're not gonna be playing games uh, we're going to be focusing on, on two things. One is we're going to focus on some of the weird food that um, a Rudai purchased that you guys were able to unlock through your uh, very um, gracious donations. Uh, we will not be doing the bugs this stream. That's going to be a completely separate stream. So we're going to do just the weird food. So it includes the, the weird, like, uh, I think it's like Cheetos uh, food and then... Uh, the different sodas, and I have a taste test form that I'll ask Erudai to kind of fill out and we can kind of talk about it. And then the main event is we're going to talk to Effie. So uh, I, th I think I talked about it last night, if you were in the stream for March of the Dragon Queen, where Legend Seeker has been making a lot of strides and it's all thanks to you guys. So we will be talking to Effie, who has done a wonderful job getting to know her. And uh, it's your chance to ask questions. Yes, this uh, we will talk about Effie for sure. So very, very exciting. So we're going to do a small portion of the food and then we're going to jump right into Legend Seeker. So make sure you have your parachutes on 
make uh, make ready. We're gonna take a dive. We are gonna take a dive. Mostly me. Uh, you're going to be up on the plane safe and cush, probably sipping on your wine while I'm plummeting to the earth with a broken parachute. Um, but, man, we got a whole bunch of stuff to try today, Sevs. Um, did you have anything you had a preference on me starting with? Let's start with the Cheetos, because those are those are really interesting. If you can maybe show, Chad, the, the, the Cheetos ones that you have. And we have a taste test form, which is my questions will be, Rating one to five. How does the food look like? How does the food taste? How is the texture? How does the food smell? And how do you rate the food overall? Okay, uh, well for uh, By the way, just real quick the way she phrased that earlier made it sound like I just willy-nilly go out and buy this food every day And uh, she wants me to report on it. No, 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 no <laughs> I was I was made to buy these. This is not stuff. I would normally ever purchase um, Oh god, there's no labels on these things It's all in well, I mean there's a label, but Japanese. it's a language I can't speak so I don't oh actually god, know what you the can't flavors. speak Japanese. What's wrong with you? Oh my god the level of racism, like, oh my god, what is going on in the world? I'm kidding. I'll have you know that I spoke Japanese on the mainstream. No, and no, it was you amazing. only speak Japanese, you only speak Craigslist Japanese, let's be honest. What's, Cra what's Craigslist Japanese? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I think you know. Wow. I, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, all right, so the options are... I don't know if you remember what you made me get. I don't actually know, but the picture on this bag is a is a burger. It's a, a burger of some kind. Uh, oh, I don't know if that was supposed to... and then the other one is a chicken wing. So I think this one's pretty obvious. It's some sort of chicken wing flavor, probably uh, teriyaki wings or something. I think it is teriyaki. Um, the burger, me... I have no fucking clue. Let me look it up. I know I sent it to you on Warlock because I spent a, while, a long time laughing about it and I was like, Warlock, check this out! Of course, of course you would scheme with Warlock. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Um, I thought for sure it would have... Here we go. So, one is Japanese grilled steak and the other one is American turkey. So, let's try... Oh, let, let's, let's, let, let's try the, the turkey. Let's try the turkey. All right. Hey, well, for the record, is. he wanted it. He said, oh, my God, this looks so good. I know I didn't say that. Those words never <laughs> left my lips. I mean, it's a step up from what we're going to be doing on the next taste testing, so uh, I'll take it. But okay, right off the bat, the smell just like hit me in the face. Does it smell like turkey? It kind of smells like turkey. It smells like it turkey smell like? mixed with like corn puff. Oh, yeah. hmm. All right, looks so like how this. does the food look? It looks pale. It's um, very normal. I'm not used to seeing a Cheeto so pale, but this one is pretty pale looking. Uh, but okay. otherwise, it looks exactly like you'd expect from a Cheeto. Uh, so, smell is that a rating system? Was it a one yeah, through five? Yeah, one to five, yeah. In terms of how appealing it is. I'd give it a three. Like, if I smelled this, I wouldn't, like, be like, man, I really want those, but I wouldn't be like, Ugh, I don't want those either. Just kind of like, meh. Okay, meh. three in smell. And rating one to five, how does the foot look like in terms of how enticing it is? Uh, enticing? I'd say a two. It's, okay. It just looks like a, it looks like a Cheeto with no Cheeto dust, which sounds unappealing. So it doesn't That's look great. True. All right, now it's time for you to taste it. And then rate it one to five in terms of how it uh, the the texture, the and the right, taste. Do you have any uh, desires for this? Do you want like one at a time, a mouthful? Just you can just do one at a time. Hmm. Well, you don't seem disgusted, so I take that as a good thing. Oh, I didn't know that in other countries, colored dyes in food is illegal. Hmm, I didn't know that. Maybe there's a good reason for that. Um, yeah, that's right. If you close it, your eyes, what does it does it taste differently? Okay, I'll close my eyes. 
Well, he's still eating it, so it must not be horrible. I'm going to, it doesn't, I mean, it's neither. It doesn't really taste like turkey to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like, um... It doesn't even taste like turkey. That's so disappointing. Yeah, no, it kind of tastes like they tried to imitate the taste of gravy, but made it extra sweet or something. It, oh, weird. It's, a, it's kind of a weird taste. Uh, I would not eat these, probably ever. Okay. Um, I would so, give them a taste of two. Okay, taste of two, and then the texture. How was the texture? That's what you'd expect from a Cheeto. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess I'd give that a five because it tastes okay. it, the texture of what you'd think from a Cheeto. Okay, so you got three in smell, two in looks, two in taste, five in texture. What's the overall rating? Overall rating? Uh, probably a two. Okay. I would not ever spend i mean i already did because you had me but i would never spend my hard-earned money on it again otherwise okay let's do the teriyaki and chat to... asked if you could mute yourself when you are chewing no you're gonna if i have to experience this <laughs> you're going to experience this chat oh my god um if i have to be forced you you put your money to make me do this, okay? Uh, th that money bar wasn't moving until she's like, I'm gonna make a root, I eat weird shit. And suddenly you guys donated like crazy. So if you wanted this, you're gonna get the whole enchilada. To be fair, to be fair, it was mostly Joe. Let's be honest. It wasn't mostly <laughs> it was Joe? <laughs> I don't yeah. think it was mostly Joe, actually. Joe was like <laughs> 150 of that? Mm. Oh, that's true. So <laughs> I think there was a couple others that participated. Um, since it was a thousand dollars, uh, let's see. Do you want me to mute? No, that's fine. I don't care. Okay. All right. Uh, let's give it a shot. And the person who requested think... it said they were kidding. I was just trying to be respectful. If it was really annoying chat, I wanted to be respectful. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. You, are you ready for teriyaki beef? No, but we're going to try it. Uh, actually, I'm more ready for this than I am the sodas. The sodas, some of those flavors sound really gross. All right, here we go. Smell. Oh. Wait, this one won't open. What the hell? <laughs> this one has like an extra strong top. What the hell? Uh, how do I get this way? Okay, okay. Uh, right off the bat, there's a stronger smell in this one. Uh, it actually does smell appealing. It smells like teriyaki. I, oh. I would imagine if I was smelling this, it was like teriyaki wings or teriyaki uh, stir fry or something. It smells pretty good. I would uh, I would give it a four. Okay, perfect. How does it look like? Show us. Well, it's got more color than the other one. It's still pale. Uh, it looks I guess basically food the same. Well, if you get a little bit closer, you can kind of see there's some like dark pits. That's yeah. like teriyaki seasoning. So there's some like coloring on it, whereas the other one was just straight up pale. Mm -hmm. um, still weird looking, not seeing an orange Cheeto, but uh, I don't know. I feel like this is biased, but we'll, we'll say another visual appeal of three. OK. All right, let's um, move on to tasting. OK, here we go. Hmm. All right, yeah, it tastes like a teriyaki Cheeto. I mean, really? I, don't, I don't know what else to say. It literally tastes like they put teriyaki on a Cheeto. Oh, okay. And it's, um, it even tastes like, I'm guessing it's because, like, the saliva mixes with the, the dryness, but it actually tastes like the sauce, not just like a dry powder. Oh, wow. And he's Weird. still eating it, folks, so it must not be horrible. How would you rate the taste? Um... Like, all right, I should I should clarify. Is this desirability or accuracy that I'm rating? It just says, how does the food taste? It tastes like teriyaki. So I, I guess if we're going by that, I would say a five. And if it's something like, hey, would I want to eat this? We're probably more on the three range. All right. And how about the texture? How was the texture for a Cheeto? About what you'd expect from a Cheeto, so a five. Okay, and what is the overall rating? Um, I'd give it a three. Okay. Uh, if somebody had them at like a party, I'd eat them. It'd be fine. But it's um, 
I don't know. The idea of just having a whole bag of teriyaki flavored chips isn't all that appealing. I'd rather just have teriyaki stir fry or chicken or something that teriyaki sauce actually goes on. All right, so let's move on to the sodas. All right, this is where it gets gross. Um, this one, it can't be that bad. There's you literally picked ranch flavored soda, Sevi. Um, do you have one that you would want me to start with? Um, you know what? Let's start with sweet corn. Of course you would. <laughs> All right, chat. Sweet corn soda. Yeah. <laughs> for your uh, perusal. That looks yeah. very, very uh, yellow. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Thanks, Sabs. Can't get oh. stir fry in the vending machine. That's accurate. Oh, shit. It's not coming up. Oh, damn it. Am I going to need an actual fucking beer opener for this? I thought these were twist off. Uh, I'm going to turn off my cam for a moment. Go grab an actual bottle opener. One second. Yeah. Well, you guys heard it. Um, I guess we have, um, so the sodas that we're going to do before we jump right into talking to Effie is sweet corn, ranch dressing, peanut butter and jelly, pumpkin pie, buffalo wings, and bacon soda. So those are the six ones that we are, that Ruta is going to try. I say we, I mean, like, not me. Um, and what I'm looking at this, it's, uh, advertised in Amazon as outrageous, wild, crazy, and unique flavors. It says, this soda pop comes in a six-pack sampler uh, with flavors that you will not find in other sodas. Um, also, apparently, this is only for adults. I have to love the fact that they chose to put a tag in it to say only for adults. Like, I have to wonder if it comes with alcohol or something. It says, this soda is only made for adults. Okay. That's, uh, that's interesting. That is really, really weird. Uh, what's really weird? Oh, it came with a tag saying that this is only for adults. Oh, that is weird. Mm -hmm. They're not alcoholic, are they? Uh, I don't think so. It's on Amazon. It's like cutting uh, Brian. It's on, it's on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Ranch is only great on the salad. That is accurate. Kind of have to yeah, wonder, really like, gross. why would anybody ever make these flavor sodas? For people like you who want to torment other people. That's fitting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's so bad it would disrupt kids' development. I can see that. All right, so are you ready with your buttery corn flavor? Uh, Yeah. All right, I was just pulling up a pop-up chat so I could see people, too. I can't see what anybody's saying. Oh, hello, Noel. I didn't see you out there. Hi. I'll put the link um, in for people who are interested. All this stuff you can find on Amazon. Who would be interested in this? Chat, if you drink this stuff for, like, just because you want to, there's something wrong with you. All right, here it is. Uh, so, smell. Oh, God, it smells like buttery corn. It does? Yes, this is going to be so gross. I hate you, Sevs. I hate you so much. It's, listen, I swear to God, it smells like a corn cob. Oh my God, I can't even paste the link. Now, I will say what you can search on Amazon. Okay, all right, so how would you rate the smell? Uh, if I opened a bottle of soda and it smelled like this, I would not want to drink it. I'm going to just <laughs> give it a one, to be quite frank. I'd be like, why does that smell like corn? I'm not drinking mm -hmm. whatever that is. You can only drink it the long way, Brian. It's a long nose bottle. <laughs> God, I hate you guys. Oh. All right. And how does it look? Let's, let's. How do you? How would you rate how it looks? It looks like it, pee. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I was, I was say, it looks like a bottle of piss. Uh, so let's just say a one again. It does not look appealing. Maybe, maybe if you change this to a pineapple on the label and then I looked at it, I'd feel differently. But as it is right now, it looks like somebody it took a piss like in this bottle and you're making yeah. me drink it. 
All right, next one is taste. I hate you. Thank you, Michaela, for the five gifted memberships. Oh, that is so gross. <laughs> I guess he will not be drinking that again. Oh, that so is I'm disgusting. taking that sub one. Okay, what what made it so disgusting? It tastes like liquid corn cob, man. It's gross. Uh, it's like somebody took corn, yeah, like mashed it and then put it in a bottle of seltzer water and said, "Here, drink this." That was disgusting. Okay. Um, and how was the texture? I don't know. It bubbled like a soda, I guess. Uh, four. Okay, it was the um, only good part about the soda. And what's your <laughs> overall rating? Uh, a one. Never again will I drink freaking corn soda. Okay. Gross. Let's now then go for ranch dressing, because you kept talking about ranch dressing. <sighs> we can't do a sweet one in between? You're giving me, like, launch with all the terrible ones? The uh, worst. Do you have the, the frog legs? No, those are going to have to go with the other gross items. Okay. Although people said frog legs are not gross, so... Well, it's sort of cannibalism, according to them. Um, all right, let me... You know all the flavors, right? Yeah, I'm looking at them in, in Amazon. Hello, Elemental MJ. Yeah, everybody has always said that frog legs taste really good, so I don't know why you're complaining. What? Everybody said the frog legs are delicious. Okay, I haven't had them, so I don't know. Um, but I figured they're, you know, it's a living creature. The bugs are living creatures. I do all the living creatures on one day. Um, okay, I don't actually have very many sweet ones, so maybe I should do a, a disgusting one first. All right, so we're doing ranch dressing. <sighs> God, I hate you. You just want to make me miserable. That's what this is about. This one looks gross, too, man. Come on. Dad was talking about ranch dressing and how good ranch dressing is. So the question is, is it going to be good as a soda? No, no, you know, it's not. You know, it's not going to be good as a soda. All right. Um, it looks. It looks pale and white and you can't see through it. And uh, that already makes it seem really gross. <laughs> I don't know if the frog legs have felt. We'll have to find out. <laughs> no, they, they don't have felt. I'm not eating a stuffed frog. All right. So how would you rate the, the looks? Is it a one? Yeah, this is, I would never drink this. Well, the label is what really throws it off. Because if this was like, if you put something else and put the word one? ice. Yeah, this is, I would never drink this. Else? Well, the label. Oh, well, how did that happen? Um, if you were to like put something like, I don't know, frosty ice or something, it would actually look appealing, but because it says ranch on it and it's this color, it looks really gross. Mm -hmm. Um, smell? Yes, Effie oh, will be joining in a few on. minutes. This is gross, man. I can smell it and I know it's not going to be good. <laughs> Quit laughing. It smells literally like a cup of ranch you're about to like dip your broccoli in. Really? Okay, so yeah. it smells like ranch. Uh, I have to. Yep. Fuck my life. Come on, people want to talk to Effie. You're delaying the stream. All right, all right, all right. Oh, God, that is fucking gross. <laughs> that would be my gag. That may be queasy. That's okay. gross. So I take it one for taste. Yeah, just give the whole damn thing a one. I don't want anything to do with that ever again. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, oh, that was so gross. It was so gross. I expected the texture of ranch, but it didn't come. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's do pumpkin pie. Thank God. Oh, man, I'm not going to get that one out of my brain. Um, all right, here's pumpkin pie. It's very orangish. It is very orangish. Uh, it looks 
It does not look the same kind of orange of a pumpkin pie, which sets me off a little bit, but um, I don't know. It looks drinkable. I would uh, I would give the look a four. Yes, we are dual streaming. Oh, man, I can't get that ranch taste out of my my head. Ooh. What does um, it smell like? It smells like spice. It doesn't really s smell really? like pumpkin pie at all. It smells oh. like a strong like cinnamon spice or something. Mm. Not what I was expecting. Uh, smell, I guess I would give it a four. It actually smells appealing, but not what I thought it was going to smell like. Well, he didn't, like, gag, so I'm taking that as a good thing. Yeah, it's, um, it does not taste like pumpkin pie at all. Uh, but it tastes like, um, you ever had big red gum? No. Oh. Well, it has a really strong, like, fake candy cinnamon type taste. Uh, like a cinnamon Tic Tac or something. Okay. But it, it does not taste like pumpkin pie at all. I, I would drink this, though. It's pretty good. Uh, it would be better with, like, alcohol in it. This, uh, this would be a good alcohol soda. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. We have three left. Let's do peanut butter and jelly. Chet, you guys better buy me a shot after this bullshit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, yeah, croissant. It's like big red. I look, it's not my favorite, but this would go good with like a whiskey or something. Uh you said you want a peanut butter jelly? Yeah. Ooh, this one looked kind of gross. Uh, the flavor doesn't sound bad, but the look is kind of gross. So there's peanut butter jelly, so you guys can see. It's got kind of a, like a pink-looking color. I guess that's their idea of what peanut butter jelly would look like as a soda. Uh, I would give it a three for look. I would not... I don't feel one way or another about drinking this. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn it. This one's not coming off, though. There we go. Um, all right, smell. Mm -hmm. That smells like peanut butter and jelly. Okay. If I close my eyes, I'd be like, somebody just put a cold peanut butter and jelly right in front of my face. Um, hmm. Yeah, tastes like peanut butter and jelly. So overall it's rating. It's weird because it's got the soda texture, which makes it weird, but it tastes like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, taste, I'd give it a four. Um, overall, probably a four. Yeah, well, that's not bad. All right. It's kind of weird. Like I, I, It's weird because I probably wouldn't like go out of my way to get this, but it does taste good. Interesting. We have two left. Um, oh. They're we both have terrible. buffalo wings and a bacon soda. Does Chad have a preference between which one to try first? <laughs> buffalo wings or bacon? <laughs> mix them all together. I think he's going to get sick. I already think I might. Just mixing <laughs> the sips I just had. I mean, you're not like super like drinking them all the way down. Um, yeah, no, that would be yeah, you better bacon. send a damn good super chat if you want that. Bacon. Bacon, bacon it is. Bacon it is. See, this is the flavor Sevy would not try. Actually, who am I kidding? You wouldn't try any of these, but this one, um, based on your, your food preferences, you would not try. Oh, look. Oh, ew. Actually, it kind of looks like bacon in a bottle. Kind of gross. Um, not appealing. Uh, so I guess a two. <laughs> How much damage do you think these sodas would do if they were attached to the tip of an arrow? You know what? Um, the same amount that I'm going to do to Valrock's character next time we play. <laughs> I don't even know if who, that's who said it, but I have a good guess that's who it is. Was, that was Valrock. That's why I laughed. Oh, it smells like bacon bits in a bottle. Oh, oh weird. Uh, all right. Oh, that is disgusting. Okay. Oh, that's actually worse than the ranch. Really? Why? Yeah, that's really gross. I can't explain it. It's like... 
somebody took sugar seltzer water and then took like the the, the scrapings of bacon you just fried and put it in the, the bottle. Oh, that tasted so gross. Oh, gross. That looks, that sounds disgusting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that that's, sounds uh, disgusting. We're just going to do ones all down the line. That's disgusting. Okay. All right. And last one. Oh, I felt queasy. All right. Buffalo wing? God damn it. I hate this challenge. Mm, here we go. Yep. Uh, it looks like buffalo wing sauce. It's got the right orange color and everything. So on a Plot peel, twist, like, that was just bacon grease. That's what it sounded like it was. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it tastes like. It, oh, man. I want to like, I'm, I can't. Oh, uh, God, man. It looks like buffalo sauce. So peel, I would say, is like a three. It looks so uncomfortable. Well, at least this is the last of it, so. It definitely smells like it, but it's weird because it doesn't have. It's a weird feeling because it smells like it, but usually when you smell that flavor, there's like the smell of heat too, and that's not uh -huh. there, which is kind of weird. I wonder if it's um, going to be spicy. It's a good question. Here we go. Oh, that that's disgusting, confused. too. Oh. These are all terrible. Well, that's not accurate. You really like the peanut butter and jelly one. Okay, one. I liked one of six. <laughs> Thanks, Bev. And you like the teriyaki <laughs> one. God, man. I, I, I don't know how to describe that. That was weird. It tasted like a strange chemical that then... I know what I want to say it tastes like, but I'm not going to say it because um, it'll turn into a meme. It tastes bad is all I'm going to say. It also tasted like there it was like a lingering aftertaste that slowly built like they're trying to make it spicy, but it wasn't spicy. It just got grosser. Oh, wow. So which one of those was your favorite one? Uh, peanut butter and jelly easily. That was, was the only decent one. I'm going to I'm going to tell you. Uh, and which one was the one that you hated the most? Um, the one I hated the most? Probably bacon or ranch. I don't know. Those are both pretty close. Um, wow. The bacon one was probably a little bit worse. Wow. Oh. Crazy. Yeah, that was really gross. Um... <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I hope you're all happy with that. Uh, my stomach hates me right now. And so does my brain. And I hope you're happy, Sev. It was fascinating. And I think Chad got what it wanted out of it. Um, I'll be dumping all of these out. Except for maybe peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh man! <laughs> but I told you what it tasted like for your for your knowledge. I saw. Um, and then, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Um, yeah, so frog legs uh, we'll do on the next one, and then bugs. So there'll be another taste testing of a really different kind uh, that I'm looking forward to a lot less than this one. Yeah. All right. So I think that does it for this section. And now we're ready to talk to Effie, correct? Yeah, so uh, I'll do a little lead in if you'd like, or unless you want to do one, I don't care. No, nope, go for it. Uh, so as you guys might be aware, I am working on a very special project. Um, as you know, the reason I started Tabletop, uh, Geeks Gamers Tabletop, and I went to Jeremy in the first place is uh, there is a, a rot that has uh, permeated the industry that we all love. Uh, something that has been festering from the inside and just uh, destroying all of our favorite IPs and our favorite games in the tabletop space. Uh, and it's been happening for a while. And so I started the channel because one, I wanted to create a place where we could get away from all that and we could play games the way that we've always played them. Uh, just having fun with our friends, making dumbass jokes and not caring about who's judging us for those jokes or trying to cancel us. A place, um, I won't call it a safe space because I really hate that word, but a place where you can go and know that 
you're gonna be fine. You can make whatever fucking jokes you want, and you're gonna have fun. And um, we're gonna use lore that makes sense, the traditional lore, that sort of thing. But that doesn't solve the problem in the industry. It, it doesn't come close. It gives us a place to go. It gives you a place to unwind and not have to deal with all that bullshit. But your games are still being destroyed by those bigger companies. Uh, and I had multiple people ask me about this several times over the first year of me being on here. And then finally, I said, you know what? Maybe I will. Uh, I am writing a tabletop game of my own as an answer uh, to everything that you're seeing out there. One that will have consistent lore, that's not worried about outside pressures and activism, trying to influence the story in the game that you are falling in love with and enjoying. And I've been working very, very hard on putting the system together. Sevi knows. Uh, she's been uh, sort of helping me on this and uh, partnering with me on it. And she's been also cracking the whip a little bit to make sure I'm actually getting stuff out for you guys, which is uh, needed. I, I do need that sometimes. Um, and uh, th there's been a lot of progress, over 360 pages of text just on the Seeker's Guide alone, which is the Player's Guide. And there's going to be three books. It's a lot of work. Oh. Uh, but we did want you guys... Oh, go ahead. No, Two Snooze has a really valid question. Which is worse now? The woke tabletop communities or the woke video game communities? Man, can I just say both? Can I, I just say both? Yeah. Because yeah, with everything really that is going on with DEI, is like you don't have to shove it up somebody's butt. Like, seriously. Right. It, it's yeah, absolutely it's... insane. And then you do have also like the, the whole thing of people like just trying to cancel each other just because, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing specific games or you're making like a statement out of it or, you know, so definitely I, I think it's both. I, I don't know if you think one is worse than others. I know, uh, well, it's all the same, said right? said he thinks tabletop is worse, which is, it's, it's okay to, to have that uh, opinion. It might it's be all the same. Worse. It's all the same because it's the same rot in all of our favorite. They're, they're destroying all of it. They're going, they're, they're rotting all of it. I will say the tabletop space is better and worse in two senses. It's worse because I think the community is more pervasive and more toxic. But it's better because we have more control over how we handle it. With movies, comic books, uh, video games, we have like zero control. They they control that medium. If you try to modify their game, they can block you from their servers. If you try to write your own Batman comic book, they'll sue you into poverty. Like you can't do anything about that. But tabletop games, they can't control how you play the games. It's a rule set. So you actually can take what they're trying to do and, and take the reins for yourself. Um, so I do think it's better in that sense. It, and that's why I did this channel to show you guys how you can do that. And it, who cares what they're doing, all right? If they're going to sit there and try to make you say orcs or fairies, you can just flip them the bird and play the game the way you want to play it. That's what I try to show you guys through the tabletop channel. Um, so I do think we have an advantage there. Um, also, there's open gaming licenses, so you can create your own content using their rule sets, and they can't do anything about it because they created an open gaming license. And uh, so you can make whatever lore you want, and they just kind of have to sit there and twiddle their thumbs. Um, but it still, they control the IP and it's the IP that you love and it sucks to see them tear it apart. And it sucks to see this community tearing it apart and eating it up and, and then trying to conk you over the head for it. Uh, it it's ridiculous. Yep. Um, um, so I, I want to create, mm -hmm. Oh, let me switch for a second. You're going to be muted. So just give me mm -hmm. one second. Sure. I'm swooshing. Sure. Maybe it, maybe it got fixed. I think it got fixed. Start talking. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. it worked. I guess it worked in all of them, so I don't need to fix anything. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah, so that's why I'm doing that. I'm trying to create a gaming system uh, that you guys can rely on, enjoy, get that old school gaming feeling, and know that the people running it, we're not going to do that bullshit to you. When we create lore, it's going to stay that way. If somebody outside says, boo-hoo, that offends me, we're not going to change it for them. We're going to leave it, because it's for you. That's who it's for. And... Um, so that's the idea. I'm building this for you guys. It takes time, and I know that you guys have noticed this take time, taking time, and uh, you, got, you guys have been very supportive and gilded. Uh, that's the, the one place you can go to help support this project. So if you're interested, you can go to Gilded, and uh, I have a private section on there for my game, Legend Seeker. When you subscribe, you can, um, you can support the system directly that way, and it goes towards artwork, it goes towards the writing, editing, and everything that we're going to be doing, including publishing. Uh, I am in talks with a very interesting person uh, about getting this thing publishing, so when we have more news on that, we'll let you know. But uh, let's just say, it's somebody I think you guys will be very excited for us to be working with if that happens. Um, 
But we did want to show you more tangible stuff. So if you are a gold member right now, and I encourage you to be one, you can already see spells that we're putting out, some of the class flavor text, and we're going to have classes coming out in the next several weeks too with the actual mechanics broken down. Uh, we'll be doing play testing, so you'll get to try it first before anybody else and help us work out the bugs and kinks and balance it out and tell us what you like and don't like, all of that. And uh, you'll get the first taste of what our system is going to be like. Uh, but one of the things we wanted to do to make it more tangible for you, uh, because this is something, you know, Sevs and I, we talk all the time. We have our meetings, right, Sevs? Um, and one thing that she said would be very helpful and that she's hearing from you guys is that it would be nice to have something tangible to see <laughs> for, for all the efforts that we're doing. Uh, and a lot yeah. of that's really hard to do. It's locked down under NDA, and we don't want to put it out there for the people to start stealing our work and stuff yet we, until it's ready or tearing it apart before it's ready. But what can we give you before that? Artwork is pretty easy, but what if we could give you an inside look at that process? You can see how much work actually goes into this and understand. Uh, so the cover artist, uh, Effie Von Kleist, is uh, here today. She's going to be talking with us. We're going to ask her some questions and just talk back and forth with her. And uh, she's already put up one video on the channel. You can go watch it after the stream if you'd like. It's a 10-minute video uh, where she breaks down her, um, her character process and how she models them and things like that. And then she's going to be doing a live stream for you guys where she actually does the cover for Legend Seeker live for you guys. So you'll see the cover from start to finish in its uh, iterations. So I think that'll be really cool for you guys. But we wanted to introduce you to her first. So uh, says if you want, you can bring her in. We'll say hello. Hey. She's there. Hello, Effie. How are you doing? Hi. I'm great. Hello, Sevi. Hello, Arudai. Hi. Um, well, you guys get to meet the wonderful, talented Effie. What time is it over there right now? It's almost 8 a.m. I'm on the other side of the planet. <laughs> That's not bad at all. For some reason, I thought we were like forcing you to wake up at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite that bad. <laughs> I'm I'm actually like quite literally on the other side of the planet. I'm like I'm thinking about eleven or twelve hours from uh, opposite East Coast. Okay, yeah, that's 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 not that bad. I guess like just with with the internet and how used you, you get to everybody being in different parts of the the planet, it's not like super bad or anything. I'm just I'm just glad that it worked out for sure. Yeah. So yeah. um, I, I do, I, I will say, if you guys have questions for Effie, please put them in the chat and we'll make sure to get to them as well. Um, so Effie, I think like one of the things that I'm most curious about is what drew you to drawing? What drew me to drawing? Well, um, I've, been, I've been interested in drawing for as long as I can remember. When I was, when I was very little, you know, it just took the form of like coloring books and, and scribbling on pages with crayons. And then um, the older I got, uh, you know, I was also always very interested in animation. I loved watching cartoons. Um, when I was when I was in middle school, high school, I got really into anime actually, and that was probably. Oh. Yeah, that was actually probably my uh, my first foray, and and, and also discovering uh, anime art on DeviantArt. Back then, DeviantArt was the uh, the the kind yeah. of the big art the big art community online. Now there are so many, um, and and that's kind of how I discovered other people who liked animation and art and liked to draw like me. So that was kind of my first like step into it, and then yeah, and then and then I uh, I went to. I went to school. I went to college for fine arts, um, and then I and then I started just kind of get going back through the artistic history and, and uh, getting really into um, classical art, uh, fine art, uh, the old masters, uh, golden age illustrators. And, you know, as, as I got old, as I got older, my taste kind of I guess refined and matured. <laughs> yeah. So from manga to classical art, that is a, that is an interesting progression. It is. Oh, yeah, it is. It's, sure. it's pretty. It's yeah. I, when I was when I was fourteen, I wouldn't have like you know put myself here, <laughs> but but here I am, and 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 I just I really love my field. I really love uh, classical art and and fantasy art. And we do have it, it, we, oh, oh we do have a question from chat. Which one do yeah. you prefer, digital or analog? Um, that's actually a really hard question. I, I because I do both. Um. I started out doing, when I first got into the art communities online, I started out doing digital. So I learned Photoshop because I wanted to 
color in I wanted to like paint anime figures but at the same time I was going to school and I was learning traditional art so and when I went to college it was it was all traditional so uh, acrylics watercolors graphite drawing um, and so I I'm actually still figuring out my process I'm still figuring out what I prefer to do I'm leaning a little bit more towards um, traditional at the moment but i'm also thinking that i i want to blend it somehow kind of how uh we've talked about uh justin gerard on the stream before and he's been my mentor for the last few years and he has a blended process so he does a lot of uh, graphite pencil drawings and then he will scan that in and do digital paintings on top of that so i i like that process you know but sometimes you just i just want to get some paint on the canvas yeah, I think that makes sense. I remember I saw your video and you were like, oh, I make these scribbles, they'll look horrible. And I'm thinking they look pretty great. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, like, you should, you should see like, my they're scribbles. absolutely Holy horrible. Shit. But uh, one of the things that I, I found to be really interesting was that you said that you have people uh, post for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> people who are um, my friends and and I have, I have my... You know, still your my, friends. my husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have had my husband. I've put my husband in, in some costumes before as well, too. Um, I have hired models before for for like for big projects. And it it's very it's it's very important for reference. And and it's also really fun. It's you know, I don't get to do a lot of a lot of cosplay. You know, I don't get to go to a lot of conventions, but um, doing this process kind of let, lets me do that a little bit vicariously. So I can put on some costumes and take photos of myself and I can put on costumes of my friends and they really enjoy it because who doesn't like putting on costumes? <laughs> what's, the, what's the funniest costume you've, uh, you've put your husband in? <laughs> oh, a wizard, a wizard costume. <laughs> like, oh, a, hey, like, hey. like you, you can actually see the painting. The painting is on my website. It's called Last Resort. <laughs> uh, that That is the picture that brought me to you actually so yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's oh, my wow. husband <laughs> wow, that i put a wig crazy. on him his, his hair isn't really that long his, he has he has a normal haircut <laughs> oh okay okay you had a question Seth? oh yep um just um uh, i think um brian from chat asked you know i asked you which one you preferred because i do both oh because you do both which one do you enjoy more? Yeah, that's a. I it's really hard to answer that question because I, I enjoy di different processes at different times. Sometimes um, the, the analog process can take a little bit longer. So sometimes I get a little bit impatient and I just want it to be finished. So sometimes I like the speed and the uh, and the control of of uh, digital. You know, with 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 analog with traditional painting. You know, sometimes you don't know where it's going to go. And if it goes somewhere you don't want, well, you're just kind of stuck with that. That's and, true. you know, and um, like there's there's a, a joy in working with physical media and the unpredictability, unpredictability of it, especially when you work with watercolors and like watered down acrylics, which is enjoyable. So it, it really just depends on my mood, I, I, can, I can say. <laughs> yeah. um, we Sorry, saw this like is another answer. question. So we saw in your video that you use mannequins for the characters. Do you rig up mannequins of sorts for the dragon um, and such to get the feel of the scale, or what did you do? Oh, actually, that's a really good question. Um, so I do, I do. Um, I have, I have, I have a maquette. I build my cats, which is which helps me to visualize the space a lot of the time. Or if there's a creature that there aren't very easy um, like models for that you can buy or you can look at, I have to make my own. So usually I will, um, I, have, I have a bunch of modeling clay, like plastic clay doesn't dry out. <laughs> and and if, I, if I need a reference for it, I'll make it myself. So for, for Legend Seeker, actually, I don't know if, if I can um, have, have the image on Procreate. So I, share your I might have to. Well, it's it's on my iPad, so I don't know. But okay, I can probably go ahead. Show, I can probably yeah. just show you in the camera. Um, yeah, that's fine. So so I made. Here you go. Can you can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I made a, um, I made a model, like a, a clay maquette of the scenery. And it's, you know, it's, it's not like super fancy or anything. It's really just for scale and for distance. Well, that um, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, in the, in the mock-up, in the small painting, you can, there's a, a lake of fire basically. And there's, and there are characters and there's a dragon. I don't know if you can see the dragon is right there. Mm -hmm. There's um, a gate. Or like oh, a, yeah. um, an open, an open yeah, doorway like here, yeah. Right, right, and and a stairway. So, so I made that, and then I have all sorts of little gadgets here in the studio. So I have these um, little LED uh, lights that I bought off of Amazon, and so this is built in on a on a cardboard box. So I just kind of like put the light inside the box, and then when I oh my God, that is so light, cool. Shut Isn't up. Isn't it cool? Isn't that it so is cool? so cool. <laughs> That's what it looks like, yeah. So this is this is really um, great because oh my god, really... and the shadows. Yeah, and this is stuff I would never be able to guess. So there's some there's some information you can only really get by making and building models, which you can also yeah. do in three D. But um, I'm 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 a little rusty with three D, so it would take me it would take me a little bit of time yeah. to like you know to learn how to do it again so yeah. just making making physical models is really is actually really fast and easy for me so i'll do that <laughs> yeah you sent me a few of those pictures and i thought that was really cool it was like a different angles uh, with the lighting and stuff and i was like man she really gets into this for the last cover yeah. you did for me too the uh, the nuggets of yeah one the, uh, that you kind of had some of the same stuff going on which is pretty neat oh yeah i think, um, I, think I have i have a picture of that somewhere if you want to see it <laughs> yeah yeah sure uh, if you don't know, Chat, she also did the cover for uh, the little one shot that I'm doing, Nuggets of Nia, and uh, you can already see that cover, the full completed cover in Gilded. If you go to Gilded uh, and you're a member of Legend Seeker and you scroll into the new section, it's like four or five posts down. You can see the cover there. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, I did have a question. Uh, uh, this is going to be your welcome. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So yep. there's that was the the lighting um, model for the Nuggets of Nia. Oh which, which yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's really cool. See, real artistry here, chat. I did not lie to you. I said that I, I got a real awesome artist, and she's uh, she's phenomenal. Um, Thank you. So, Effie, I've got a... Uh, <laughs> you're going to get a welcome to the community here. You're going to learn our community here very soon. Okay. Um, here is a member message for you, Effie. He says, this is from Elsa Barrett. Hello, Effie. Van Gogh was an artist, and he cut off his ear. Do you have both ears? I can't tell. <laughs> I think I still have both ears. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go, Elsa. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Um, Van Gogh was, was an interesting character. <laughs> also an artist. <laughs> well, you kind of have to... I mean, I would imagine... I, my understanding is that he cut it off because he couldn't draw it. <laughs> I, I actually haven't heard that story. I thought he cut it off to send to, like, some jilted lover. <laughs> No, that's not the story I heard, but maybe I maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe somebody can can look it up. But my understanding was that he got so frustrated with trying to do a self portrait with his ear that he just cut it off. Sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a, like a stable thing to do. Yeah, of that's course. pretty normal. That's pretty normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we do have a next question from Bell Rock. Um, would you say that you do not make mistakes? They're just happy accidents. No, I made mistakes. I definitely made mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> um, I guess um, one of the reasons why I've adopted the process that I have adopted, which is um, which is a, a, based off of the old master's process, um, it's a series of um, steps of ever-increasing complexity. But I figure out the hardest stuff in the beginning with uh, first with thumbnails um, and then rough and then studies and then a tight drawing. So like at every step, I'm figuring something out. So by the time I get to the final painting, it's almost like I've rehearsed it enough. I've rehearsed the image enough that mistakes are less likely to happen. But they do still happen. You know, sometimes I might I might be like, well, you know, like. I haven't tried this brand of paint before, but it's the only color I've got, <laughs> you know, and then I'll be like, oh, this is a, t this is, oh, this doesn't look, this doesn't look great. So, you know, you do have to, there are things that happen. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm not an a la prima painter, so I don't just like slap paint on the canvas and hope for the best. Um, I, 
my I prefer a much more methodical approach because it's more interesting for me because I get to discover things along the way, but it's also a lot more predictable. So I don't have to worry about spending like 120 hours on a painting only at like hour 140 to mess it all up and be like, ah, you know, this is terrible. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that when I do drawings or, or paintings, I have to be looking at something. I can't just draw something out of my imagination because it'll look really, really bad. So, yeah. and the, 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 it's it's so labor intensive. I know uh, for physical mediums, I, I love using graphite more because you can really play with the shadows. And But digital art, it's so hard. You need to be extremely precise. And I haven't really mastered the art that you have of like, making things bigger and smaller and all that stuff. So I have to grab my Apple pencil and just like draw it like that. But I really need to like see something so I can see why you having those 3D models becomes so important, particularly too with the shadows. Cause that's something that I, I know that it's, it's definitely a struggle when you're not seeing something in real life, you don't know how it's supposed to look at and pop out. So I, that's interesting. Uh, the, yeah, the definitely. That myth mythology. Um, the we got the next question. Um, okay, uh, folks, please don't like the everybody. I don't like the stuff until we ask the question. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't like it. Um, so is it normal for someone to have a closet full of costumes and oh, occasionally have their friends wear some of them? I don't think I that was a question. I think he was making a joking comment. I think. He, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know if it's normal, but I'm not normal. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite costume? My favorite costume, um, I probably probably just like the medieval style dresses, like long skirts and dresses. I've been kind of getting. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of pieces. I've only recently started to collect them as I've in the last few years, as I've been um, doing more and more of this intensive uh, mm -hmm. referencing process. But I do have. I do have like some, some, you know, some cute peasant dresses and some, you know, some, some weaponry. Oh, 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 actually, actually, oh my God, I was you really... said you have weapons. I just, <laughs> like, you weapons. just got her attention I'm, right there. I'm really excited. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have real weapons. I have, I have like toy weapons, you know, and we're, real weapons are hard to come by, but I actually did just, um, just buy like a set of armor, like a set of like leather armor. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it's not super fancy, you know, because I'm not I'm not rich, but it is like a full, like you know, it's got like the the, the chest piece and the um, what are the shoulder pieces called? Like shoulder pads, pauldrons, pauldrons, pauldrons. Yeah, it's 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 a whole thing because I, I I've been drawing a lot of knights. Oh, and, mm -hmm. and I don't, yeah, I've been drawing a lot of knights. I'm drawing a lot of like people in armor. So um, I was really excited to buy that and. I still have a few pieces coming in the mail. So that's probably oh. my favorite costume for now. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to put some, I haven't put anybody in it yet, but I, I, I'm excited to. So how did you feel when Aruda reached out to you and asked you to be part of Legend Seeker? Like, did you immediately roll your eyes? I was like, oh my God, Aruda, you're full of shit. Or were you, or were you like, oh my God, this is wow. amazing. Or this is a challenge. Or what were some of your thoughts when Aruda reached out to you? <laughs> And it's okay oh. to say he's so annoying. Yeah, they do all the time. <laughs> it would be nothing new. No, I was I was really pleased. It was very. Um, it's always it's always nice when somebody appreciates your work, and and they want you. They appreciate your work so much they want you to do something for them, and that's a really good feeling. Um, I actually. So I, I, I've been drawing for a really long time, like since I was younger, but I, but I actually have been on this illustration path, like making illustration my career only for the last few years, because, um, because before this, I was a graphic designer. I, it was like an eight year stretch after college where I was just like, well, I, I don't know how to make money and graphic design works. So I, I was, I, I wasn't doing illustration as my job. So for the last few years, I've kind of been going hard on, um, just trying to make like the career I've always wanted go. And I, so I still feel very much feel like I'm kind of in the early stages of that. And, you know, somebody reaching out to me and being like, Hey, your work is awesome. I just can you want to make something for me? That feels, that feels great. So thank well, you. Your, your work is amazing. 
it is amazing. It's very amazing. And uh, she really said, so where I found you was in uh, Justin's uh, Discord, right? So um, a talented artist himself, definitely. And uh, I would love to know more about your mentorship with him. But um, th there was just so you know, there's there's a whole bunch of artists in there who are all kind of like posting and saying, hey, look at this, look at that. Um, I'm sure some of them trying to get, you know, opinions from Justin, but also just sharing work with each other. And there's a lot of pieces in there. I saw a lot of different people's artwork, but yours really stood out. So um, Thank you. I wanted you to know that. But you tell us a little bit, uh, Justin, how did you get involved with him and uh, meet him? Because uh, he originally was who was uh, talking about doing some of this work, too. And he he had some uh, some some house issues. Uh, and uh, he, he's a little backed up on some bigger projects, but tell us about your experience with him. Yeah, so um, I, I met Justin um, through his uh, Patreon mentorship program. So, um, so if you if you want to if you want to grow as an artist, you can sign up for the mentorship program through is one of the tiers on his Patreon. <laughs> and I just I just kind of stumbled across his artwork um, and and then his Patreon right about the time. I was thinking about quitting my last graphic design job where I was just, you know, making logos and doing web design and just really unhappy with it. And I was like, and I, it was really kind of a moment for me. I was like, I, like, this is the, yeah, this is it. Like, I love this guy's artwork. Everything about it speaks to me. Um, this is the kind of art that I want to make. And, and I have, I've known for a very long time that <clears throat> if you want to really, if you want to like really, reach the highest levels of your craft, having a mentor is really, is really a must. Like you, you need to find somebody who, who can walk you through, not like, not just like the big things, but also there, you know, there's so many little things like business questions or whatever that come with be being an illustrator. So, so I saw that I signed up for his mentorship. That was, um, I guess 29, just before, just before the start of COVID or around like mm. 2019, 2020. Um, and then, and then we're, we're, I've just, I just took it from there. Um, I, before that I had, I had done a lot of illustration and I had a portfolio, but I felt that it was kind of disjointed. Like I worked in a lot of different styles um, and I wanted to have someone to help me really hone it in and find, help me find my voice. And that person. That's was awesome. Uh, I have a question. It's uh, it's um, so I'm skipping ahead a little bit because I just saw it in chat. Uh, but it was a question I was kind of already thinking of. Uh, but somebody said mentorships are way more valuable than some college degree nowadays. So I, I am curious. So you you went to school for this. Did you find the schooling more valuable for what you're doing, or the mentorship with Justin? That is a really really good question. Um, One thousand percent. Um, I, I I wouldn't ha would not have recommended my fine arts degree. Um, I went to a four year college. Um, it was just a bachelor of fine arts. I did studio art, and you know I spent I spent four years learning a lot of theory and, and doing and doing some studio art. But they they really didn't teach me anything about how to be a commercial artist or how to be an illustrator. So if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have gone down that route. I would have. And now there now there are so many amazing. Uh, art ateliers and art schools online that you can have a much better education for a fraction of the price. So finding, um, before I did the mentorship with Justin, I did sign up for a couple of those um, like online art schools and I did a couple um, kind of video courses that were also really helpful. I did one, there was one based on a farm, I think his name was Robert, Robert Chang was, had a how to be a, be a better artist uh, course. I did that a few years before Justin, and that was really great. But um, finding Justin was just like the, the 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 light speed like warp tunnel into like okay, this is this is how you do it. Cool. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so going back to some of our questions, do you play <clears throat> any tabletop role playing games? So um, I, I did, I have before. Um, I, I would say that most of my, of my fantasy RPG experience comes more from video games. Um, when, I was, when I was a kid, I used to watch my older brother playing, the, uh, playing a lot of like, like PC RPG games like uh, the Ultima mm -hmm. series or, oh, okay. um, or the, more, the Elder Scrolls series back back in the day so that that's kind of what first got me started into rpg fantasy gaming um and then when i was when i was in college i did play D. &D. i had a little had a group a group of friends and we would meet 
What was your you character? Know. I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> I was say, answer carefully. What? This will say so much about you. Oh, yeah. I... And oh, which version was it? Was it three, three point five, four, or five? Oh, guys, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just go back to what was your character? We were really, we were very casual players. I'm pretty sure I was an elf. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was an elf. Um, an elf, like, mage. Ah, sure mage. mage. You know, that makes yeah. sense. Those wizards, very procedural Spell and scaster. methodical. That, that, yeah. uh, that lines up. Yeah. <laughs> When That's you funny. could have been a gloom stalker, <laughs> an assassin. I wish I'd had you two there at the time to to guide me. <laughs> this well, all, just likes to I'm all about hitting hard and staying far away from combat, so I'm never hit. That's my the, the, the very epitome of being able to dish it but not take it uh, in character class form. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's exactly what it means. <laughs> oh, that is fun. <laughs> Um, has your husband ever come home and messed up your dioramas by playing with the minis? <laughs> <laughs> no, he hasn't. Man, I been... know if I saw a bunch of minis, I would be like, hello, I'd probably what are you doing here? Too. I'd probably I get in trouble know. for it, but uh, I'd be like, <laughs> what if I just... <laughs> I wonder if she'll notice if I... <laughs> and then I would, like, maybe, like, start moving stuff slowly. <laughs> 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 He does like to tease me. Yeah, yeah. He would maybe he would like move it a little just to be like, <laughs> like just like tease me a little bit. Like, hey, something something changed, but I, I can't tell what it is. What is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I would uh, I would get in trouble for sure. Um, <clears throat> did I just did one get deleted? I could have sworn I was just looking at one and it vanished. Nope, nope it did okay. not. Okay, I'm just um. It did not. It did not. But um, let's see. Um, tell me about your first impression when you met Erudai. What was like? Did you think he was an annoying, short, little man that just kept blabbing on and on and could never shut up? Why are they roasting you so much, Erudai? <laughs> this is what they do, Effie. This is what they do. This channel is the Roast Erudai channel. If you, you'll figure it out very quickly. But Effie, listen, listen. While I've got your attention it's okay right to now. Be honest. Stay Team Arudai, okay? I have so precious few that stay Team Arudai. I need you in my camp, all right? <laughs> Sebi's got, she's got a whole army, all right? I need you to stand fast with me. <laughs> now, with that in mind, answer that question. <laughs> no, Arudai, Arudai was, was very nice and very professional, and and I liked him Thank because you. he liked my art. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you know, you go, he's Kat. not very the nice, only one. Very professional. He's not the only one who likes your art, so <laughs> you don't need to stick by him. Just wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> trying to tempt you away from me already. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, tell uh, tell us about um, to tell us about like one art that you had to do, a project that you had to do that you're most proud of? Oh, I'm really, okay, so there is, I don't know if I can share my screen. Maybe I can go ahead and share my screen. So there's a there's a painting that I did when I was doing a smart, smart school class. And for the, for the, those of you guys, who, those of you guys who don't know, smart school is an online, an online art school, but it's the, the teachers are the best of the best, and they're they work in the industry. I don't know if you're familiar with names like Donato Giancola. He's one of the teachers. He was one of my teachers. Dan Dos Santos, um, just really amazing artists. Greg Manchest. So these are the guys who are who are teaching. So I I did um two semesters of this of Smart School, and I did a painting in Dan Dos Santos class that I'm really proud of. And that was a um, alternate alternate book cover for a fantasy novel, and it did the the, the stars just aligned with this painting, <laughs> and and everything went right. And it, it, I feel I still feel like it's one of the best paintings I've done so far. So I can show you guys. Yeah, um, I would love to see. That. Oh yeah, I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me know if you need to share, so I know I need to swoosh. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. And while you're grabbing that, somebody offered you some advice. Uh, our Frost says, get paid, then turn on him. Damn, wow, our Frost. <laughs> wow. That's so this amazing. is my website. This is my website. Um, 
it's not not a super fancy website. It is something I threw up, but this is this is uh, this is digital. So uh, graphite pencil drawing. Oh, that is amazing. Painting. And so it's an alternate. Yeah, it's an alternate book cover for a story that oh. is set in a Persian-inspired fantasy world. So the main character is a girl named Esther, and she has a giant bird called a rock, which is a bird of mm -hmm. uh, Persian legend. And she's trying to train this bird to hunt down the manticore that killed her family. So the That's story really was really cool. cool. Yeah, the story was really cool. The characters are really cool. And they just made for a, just a very cool, like, very awesome piece and i had a girl come in and model for me this is this is a, a really really nice person I, I took lots of photos of her <laughs> and <laughs> made a model for the bird um the, i did the whole process on this one so this was this it was one of the first amazing people. thank you thank you yeah if you if you want effie um in a private chat with me you can drop uh, your link to that website i'll give it to the mods and they can put that up there so people can go look at your work for sure sure you're up. i will do that Back. Yeah, that was really, go. really uh, very nice. Um, yeah, oh, definitely. Man, that's that's pretty something. amazing. Oh, I do have another question. Hmm. Um, um, and then we'll ask the, the next question from, from chat is, have you ever been like, have you have you ever had to draw something that you were really embarrassed about drawing? I was really embarrassed about drawing. Mm. Or did it make you feel uncomfortable that you really did not want to draw it? And how do you handle that? Maybe, maybe it was okay. I, in, in recent memory, I can't think about. I can't think, you know, because I, I wouldn't really draw something that made me feel really weird. But I do. I can recall back to when I was when I first got into college when I took my first life life drawing courses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The first time you're you're drawing naked people and they're standing right in front of you and they have no shame they're just bending every which way I think I was kind of like ooh that <laughs> was <laughs> yeah this is okay <laughs> and you know that was that was a little weird at first but then you know like by the end of the lesson you're just kind of like oh okay it's just like lines and shapes and curves it's cool yeah makes hmm. sense uh, we have a question from the chat do you stream drawing anywhere. No, actually, um, this is my first stream ever in my life. So I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, this is a big, big step for me. I'm, I'm normally just like a little cave troll, and I just hide in my studio, and I just, you know, paint for hours, and I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> so, but I, I have been, I have been thinking about potentially doing streaming for a little while now. So when uh, Arudai offered me the opportunity to, to stream. I want, I really wanted to take it because I want to see. I want to try it out. Yeah, oh, this I is do. A, oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead. Okay, uh, so this is a good good group of people. They'll, they'll uh, be very interested in what you're doing. They'll ask you all sorts of questions, and they'll probably be nice to you. They're not nice to me, but they'll be nice to you. Oh, um, we got raided. <laughs> Hello, Tomby and Raiders. Hello. Welcome oh, back. Toe, thank you, Tomby. Appreciate that. Uh, you guys are just in time to meet Effie, and she's going to be the cover artist for Legend Seeker. So you, you picked a good time to drop in here. Thank okay. you. Um, I, I have a proposal for you, Effie. So oh, I, want, I want to explain something. So as you know, we do a lot of role-playing games, and Aruda is a player in one of those games. And uh, in, in that game, uh, particularly, he's supposed to be a tiefling um, that it's uh, a servant of the goddess Callistria, which is basically like a sex god. And he kept going on and on and on about his prowess and stuff. So Chad forced him to roll a d100 for a percentile wow. of uh, his uh, specific number. And he rolled a 36. So he got 36%. So after that, we have a memed 36 all the time. So like 36 viewers, 36 comments, 36, 36 minutes before the stream ends, because it's so ingrained in Erudai and what Erudai is and um, basically- What I am. But yeah, wow. what, and uh, tabletop generally, and what we have here with Geeks and Gamers Tabletop and Moon School, would you consider adding a hidden 36 somewhere for chat to find later 
as oh like a, as like a secret like hiding thing somewhere in the art it's like I it can be so spread. it can be yeah an easter egg it can be like in many different things uh you know like like search for the 36 because he has even said he's not gonna add a page 36 in the book so i feel like this would be absolutely amazing. Would you please, please consider doing this big favor, having an Easter egg of thirty six? God, you put me. Oh, you put me, put, put me in a tough spot. <laughs> but I will say I will, yes. I will, I will, I will, I will consider. I will consider okay. it. Perfect. <laughs> um, wow. And then we have consider. a, and then we have a question from chat. Do you like Jim Henson's work? <laughs> Uh, oh, Jim Henson, like lab the Muppets. labyrinth, Muppets. Um, I am. I guess. Hmm. I haven't seen the Muppets in a long time. Oh, oh. Do you mean? Do you mean like his drawings or like the yeah. art for Labyrinth? Um, I do. I have. I. I'm not super super familiar with, but I've seen some of the artwork for for like Labyrinth, and I think there was an artist named Brian. Brian Froud, who did some of the art for Labyrinth, and I have a lot of his art saved on my computer. So, yeah, yeah. If it's yeah, if it's if it's a, if it's kind of surreal, and if if there are a lot of creatures in it, and if it's traditionally painted, then I probably have some of that in in my sh little shoebox of artwork. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, are you familiar with Kermit the Frog? Do you, do you remember? Yes. Do you think that Erudai sounds like Kermit? Oh my god, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm just thinking validation. Hey, Krista <laughs> said you sounded like Kermit. I know what Krista said, okay? Do we have to make Effie say it? I don't know. Can, can you do a, a, uh, an accurate Kermit the Frog? Oh yeah, do it. Do it. Impression. Can you? Do I have to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't have to. <laughs> Hi ho, Kermit the Fed here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. God damn it. Are you supposed to say no, Effie? You're supposed to say no. I'm sorry. See, this is how she moves you to Team Sevy. Slowly or surely. These little yes and no questions. Welcome to the cult of Sevy. Oh my god, uh, Ibruna, we should send her some cult of Sevy merch. Would you like some cult of Sevy merch? I can give you some cult of Sevy merch. Uh, Mats, why don't you drop that link, by the way, to the cult of Sevy merch? Um, Sevy's got her own little merch line, and uh, it's pretty... It's high quality. I won't say I like the theme, but it's high quality. It, it's funny. There, there's different scenes, and the scene we have out right now is the cultist grabbing Kermit the Frog and putting him up on a stick and lighting him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna worst, have man. we're gonna have Poor other Kermit. scenes <laughs> with uh, Fed or uh, the Rudai, and then me, um, and then the the other cultists as well. So it's gonna be kind of fun. Um, yeah, if you ooh. if you would like some, I will uh, I'll send you the link and we'll uh, we'll promo you some if you want to yes. wear it. Yes. <laughs> um, sure, sure. Oh, we have a super chat from Hayden seventy five. Love everything I have seen from Legend Seeker. Can't wait to see some more of the art. Hey, I can't wait either. I'm waiting for it. It's amazing. Hopefully, I'll be able to find a way to be a play tester. I'll be at the Dallas Fan Expo. Oh my gosh, shut up. That's amazing. Hey, you're going to be there, Hayden? He got Man. the hotel in the passes today. Let's go. Nice. Can't wait to see you there, man. I've been waiting to meet you, dude. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, We'll see. Uh, where is the cult of Sevi merch? I will DM it to you, Rudai, so you can send it to Effie, and then she can pick. All right, I'll send it to her now. Uh, yeah. But you can have like uh, mugs. It can be a puzzle. It can be a t-shirt, uh, a hoodie. They have different right. stuff for you to look. Uh, I think that worked. Did that work for you, Effie? Let's uh, she see. looks weird. Oh, my thing. No, actually, my thing just kind of. Hold on. I have to. I have to click on it. I think. Hold on. Let me try it again. It, it cut it off for me. That's why it didn't work. Hold on. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Um, there, try it again. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, there it is. Yep, let me get the right one and send it over to you. And I sent you a message just above that, Effie, that you can uh, think about, but you don't have to say anything right now. Uh, okay. But there you go. There is the link. There you go. 
Okay, I will click on the link. Let me see. Uh, that link didn't work for me, actually. Yeah, oh, wait, the visit... second one. Second okay, one. Second second one. one. Okay. Visit site. Okay. Cult of Sebi. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> those, yeah, I, 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 would, I would probably wear those pants, actually. <laughs> see, aren't they adorably cute? I love them. They are really cute. They are really cute. The material looks very comfortable. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we can, we can get you some of those pants, a hoodie, maybe a hat or something. Yeah, yeah, just let us know. We'll, we'll hook you up. Sounds awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, um, so let's get back to the reason why we are here today. Um, mm -hmm. So, are you excited to do the live stream? I mean, this. I mean, this. Technically, this is your first stream ever, right? Like first stream yes. ever, ever. Wow. Ever, ever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, like, what? Like, let's start there. Like, how did you talk yourself into being okay with doing a stream? I know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm used to streaming. But I honestly, though, when I started streaming, when COVID hit, I did not have my camera on because I was like, just really self conscious. I was like, I don't want anybody to look at me. Yeah. Like, like, just don't even like, you can just hear my voice, which is very annoying. <laughs> but like, yeah, but it took me a while. And I remember making several different polls. I was like, should I turn my camera on you guys? Like, are you sure <laughs> this is gonna, like, I'm gonna probably like, I don't have a poker face. I mean, and, and people were like, yes, yes, face. you should do it. And it, it took me a while to get the, the courage to turn the camera on. So I, I'm just kind of curious as somebody who has never streamed before, like, what did you think of the idea? Like, how did you find the courage to be like, yep, I'm just gonna go live on stream and talk to people I've never met. <laughs> well, I can't say I wasn't nervous about the idea. The internet can be a really scary place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, I have, you know, I've been participating in Justin's streams for a long time, and I know that the audience there is just the audience there, and probably your audience as well, <laughs> has always just been very kind and very supportive. Um, and you know, when when people are kind of geeking out about something they all love. It can be, I know it can be a really positive community. Um, so, and you know, I, I'm not, in, I'm not really averse to speaking in front of people. Like I have, in, I enjoy doing some public speaking in the past, but it was always in front of a live audience. So it was really just kind of coming to terms with like the numbers, like, oh, I don't know, like, like you know, and not seeing their faces <laughs> and being on the internet forever. That's a little bit weird, but if it's just about the art, then, you know, and it's something that you love, then it's really hard to, I don't know, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not about, it's not really about me. It's about the stuff that I make. That's kind that of how true. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. 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 And how do you think it's it's uh, it's going so far? Like your first stream, do you feel like you're okay? You survived it? <laughs> yeah, I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm still alive. And you're still gonna... you guys. You, you guys, you guys have a way of putting people at ease. So, <laughs> and and you're still gonna do the next stream of the artwork. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're envisioning that stream to look like? Like, uh, yeah. like your setup. What do you think about like doing? What can people expect? Yeah. So, so as I mentioned previously, the 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 process goes goes along. Um, like some pretty defined steps. So I, um, I just posted or I, I sent Rudai um, the footage to post a vlog for me uh, for the for the, the studies. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm kind of envisioning like each stream that I do to like tackle kind of a part of that process. Um, it, this this painting is going to take many many hours, so I won't be able to do the entire painting on stream, but I can definitely do parts of it, and I can show you guys. Um, and just a little bit of the of the of the study process, a little bit of the the drawing process, because after this after I do the studies, um, I do a pencil drawing, a detailed pencil drawing, so I can really kind of get the bones of the painting done. And then after that, um, I will do an underpainting. If, if, if any of you are familiar with the old masters' work, they paint in a grayscale or monochrome. Uh, painting first and then we add colors on top of that and it's just kind of a progressive it's a, it's a series so so um yeah yeah i I'm, I'm really and i love talking about this stuff i don't get to i don't get to talk about it with 
with anybody, really. <laughs> you know, because like I said, I'm just I'm a little to nerd out with us. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm just a little cave troll. I'm just in my studio all the time, and, and you know, I have I have some illustrator friends, but they do like a very different process. So yeah. it, it it'll be really fun to finally get to talk about all the stuff that I I figured out and I've learned with That's you guys. So on amazing. Stage. Um, I got a question. I have no idea what it means. I'm probably going to uh, say this wrong because I pronounce everything horribly wrong. So it says, uh, what would you prefer, Mobius or Frasetta? Oh, no idea okay. what that means, but it, it looks oh, yeah. like you do. <laughs> so maybe yes. I didn't, yeah. I didn't for sure. <laughs> yeah, so Mobius and Frazetta were uh, two fantasy artists. Um, I, I think Frazetta was most active in the like 60s, 70s, 80s, but he he only I think he only passed away like 2010. He he had a very long career. And Mobius Mobius was a um, a French comics artist that had a very different style of work to Frazetta, but they're both really amazing um it's actually it's it's funny that somebody asked me this question because i look at both of their art and i find things to appreciate and love about both of their art styles mobius is um like mobius is very kind of like graphic and flat and very comic book like there's a lot of like line work um and frazetta is frazetta is all it's it's, it's shape and form and very very realistic, very represent representational art. So they're very different. Um, wow. And yeah, yeah, and and they're they're both great. I think for the style of art that I'm doing right now, probably for Zeta, because I'm going more in that of that real in that realistic fantasy art, high fantasy art direction. Yeah. But Mobius is great. Mobius is like you know good for his like surreal, his surrealism and his cool background. Oh, yeah. very nice. I can nerd out to both. <laughs> um, <laughs> next question we have is, who are your top three artists that have been your inspirations? Ooh, top three artists. Justin Gerard. <laughs> Good choice. Good um, choice. Yeah. And I don't know if I can if I can lump this in together with Justin, but uh, Justin's wife Annie um, is also. Um, a classical fantasy painter, and she she does oils. She does these fantastic, um, like uh, neoclassical Rococo style oil paintings. You should go check her out. So I I, I look I've been looking at both of their work, um, Justin for his overall process, and more recently Annie for her oil painting because I'm trying to improve my oil painting skills. So those two are incredible. Um, I've been looking a lot at uh, the, a lot of the Golden Age illustrators recently. Um, Hold and on some, a second. Some Arudai, stop it. You, you keep being timed out by the mods. Just stop it. Okay, sorry. Moving on. What? Did you even do anything wrong? Wow. Uh, sorry, you were saying. I'm, trying to, I'm still trying to think. I'm just trying to think about... Uh, that's a hard one. It's it's kind of a blend. Like the the next few would be kind of a blend. Mm. Maybe there's a there's a um, a, paint, a painter called Leighton, who I've been whose work I've been looking at a lot. And and Bojero is a was painting in the late 1800s, and and they're both they're both incredible so um <laughs> not, not a lot of people from the latter half of this century <laughs> everybody is like very old that i'm looking at and i'm inspired by well there's nothing wrong with that you know so yeah. if, if they withstand the test of mm -hmm. time that is very yes. telling yes and, and those are a lot of those are a lot of justin's inspirations um uh, yeah justin's inspirations as well he, he yeah <laughs> Well, that sounds really, really fun. Um, I know that we have a nine minutes left. So if you guys have any last minute questions, make sure to put it in the chat uh, before we do the outros and say mm -hmm. good night. Uh, while folks are deciding if they want to put a question in the chat, I have a question. So have you that more in the time that we have chatted the time that you have gotten to know chat a little bit more 
Have you thought more about putting an Easter egg in the Legends of Dragon? Uh, again? <laughs> I feel, wait, hold on. I feel like Effie and I have a connection now. I, I feel like we're connected. I don't want you to have a connection. It's too it's late mistake. now. It's, it's too late. Mistake. Erudite, it's a it's a hard it's a hard sell. <laughs> Giving me the hard sell, Erudite. <laughs> well, you there you guys have it. Uh, you can look forward to the thirty six as an Easter egg once Legend Seeker comes out. I know that uh, um, Erudite has has been in talks with folks, and I'm sure that will be announced when it's when the three books are ready to get published. Uh, I, I like if you have noticed. I have not spilled it. I have kept this secret for like three months now, and I have not spilled it. Are you proud of one me? Secret. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even convinced that you kept it on purpose. I think you just keep forgetting. No, I mean, how am I gonna forget that? Like, oh my god, that was huge. I don't know. It's it's huge. It's 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 amazing. Um, all right, so we have um, <laughs> we have a really weird question. In chat. Uh, oh God. What okay. The hell, what kind of question is that? All right. Uh, let's see. I there is a better question, so I'm gonna go with the better question. Do you do you do any modernized fantasy art, or are you exclusively strict medieval fantasy? I I haven't done any modern fantasy art. Yeah, I'm kind of an I'm kind of an old soul. Like I I'm. Always looking backwards, so I think I think for me it's 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 go old or go home. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Uh, so I think uh, because we have five minutes left before we have to do mommy's mask, we can wrap up. So, Eruda, do you want to wrap us up? Yeah, you know, why don't we start with uh, something we normally we traditionally start this show with a toast. Um, and uh, we didn't do that this time because I wanted to save it for you, Effie. Uh, so I've got my 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 partner here. She she likes to make fun of me for things. So she got me an old lives matter glass trying to insinuate that I'm old. Uh, so I've got my walker. glass. I got him a yeah. walker as well. <laughs> he actually bought me a real like a real ass walker and mailed it to my house. This is like uh, insanity. Um, if you want to get an idea for what we're like, I think you're getting it with this stream. Um, but, uh, you know what? Before I toast this, uh, there is a question that came from somebody that said, would you consider playing a game that was ran by Arudai on a stream? I would consider it, actually. You guys, you guys are a lot of fun to hang out with. <laughs> okay. I'll yeah. ask the last question that I was a little bit cautious about. <laughs> Do you think feet are just retarded hands? Do what? What? <laughs> what? Do you think that feet are just retarded hands? <laughs> I, I would, I would ask the orangutans that they could probably have a better. Answer. They, they probably could. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's there a good answer. Go. There you go. Well, uh, use the right feet for hands. Do so, you have your wine, Sevi? Yes, I do. All right. Um, it's, it's morning here. You know, so why I don't you leave coffee. the toast since you have uh, you have a connection now? Okay. Well, uh, to Effie, an amazing artist that has been helping us with Legend Seeker and has so graciously volunteered to do the Easter egg in the Legend Seeker uh, across the all three books. So make sure to look out for those. Cheers. Oh, three! What? Cheers! <laughs> oh, that all three! <laughs> Still keeps getting worse. It could get even worse. <laughs> no, no, okay, okay, we're, I'm happy with three. Uh, wow. Well, hey, it's a pleasure oh having you on. Amazing idea. Dallas Eruda gets a 36 tattoo. Let's make it happen, What? Chat. What? Who said that? <laughs> Whose idea was that? I just You're like, getting... You? That's your idea? You're kicked out of the community. Oh, God, man. I hate you. Uh, I should have wrapped before you said that. Well, on that note, um, before, thank you guys for tuning in. Effie, thank you for coming on here. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing your streams. And uh, I know chat certainly will want to see your processes and everything that you're putting into this cover. I know they're very excited for this uh, project and I think you're bringing a little bit of tangibility to it and letting them see how much work actually goes into this and um, and what artistry, real artistry looks like. Um, and I know I'm excited, so. 
Thank you both very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. If Maj, you could drop her links, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, let them know where you can be found, Effie, and then uh, me and Seth will will outro out. Okay, sure. Um, okay, so my uh, Instagram is at ea von art, so you can find me on there. Art station is Effie von Kleist, and my website that's still in the process of being made is Effie von Kleist dot webflow dot io. All right. Very nice. And then Sebs, um, do you want do you want to outro out last or me outro us last? Um, you can find me at Geeks and Gamers Tabletop uh, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays, and over at Moon Skull every other Wednesdays, uh, Fridays, and Saturdays for Star Wars. Um, and just follow my normal stuff where I do my private streams on Kick and Twitch. I'll see you guys shortly for Mummy's Mask. And I'll pass it to Abudai. All right, same here. Uh, you can find me on Tabletop, find me on Moonskull. You'll see us here very shortly for Mommy's Mask, where Mort will be waiting for you. And, uh, well, Mort hasn't had enough whiskey, so I'll have some in between just for you guys, for all the punishment you've dealt me this stream. Uh, thank you again, Effie, for being here, and Sefi for being such a beautiful, gracious host. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and we will talk to you later. Bye, guys.